and we all know who Ted is, and you probably all had the same experience that, that I did, um, which is that his, his, his wonderful, funky um, book said, uh, these things are coming, and they're going to change our lives. And I had no idea I was not a, a person who messed with computers or who was interested in computers. And, and years went by, actually, before I um, discovered what, what, was, what was coming. Um, and Ted um, has an ability to see the right way to do things. And I, and I know that it's very frustrating to him because people don't do things in the right way. But um, we wouldn't be here today talking about this without Ted Nelson. So, Ted. All right. There needs to be another paradigm besides the main one, okay? The so-called modern GUI, which I prefer to call a PUI, or Park User Interface, <laughs> has been with us for, uh, for a very long time, since it was rolled out on the Macintosh. Uh, Alan Kay himself, I just <laughs> ran into a panel, I'd been a transcript of a panel I was on in 1990, where Alan Kay called the present interface an abortion. <clears throat> but everybody, but there it is, all those overlapping windows and pull-down menus, and that's it. And more important, <clears throat> in the political mishmash that is so the software world, it's all politics and salesmanship, <clears throat> there is no alternative to the standard notion of text. The slogan WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. What you get when? Why, when you print it out. So that means that this slogan is a propaganda line for making you think that the computer is a paper simulator. Now, I took the opposite approach, okay? I was a media guy. I uh, have this along. Here was a, uh, a kite-shaped magazine I published when I was 19 that uh, you had to turn the pages in various ways. <coughs> and uh, so I was, I was into many, many, in college I did LPs and my, I won prizes for playwriting and so forth. And when I saw it, when I took a computer course, I said, my God, the interactive computing screen is going to be the new home of the human race. And that was 1960. And uh, I tried to tell people this and they couldn't imagine interactive screens. Well, there's a movie, I'd made a movie. I knew what screens, screens, I can do that. So it's my job to design the media of the future because nobody else gets it. And in fact, that's how it's happened. The techie guys have imitated paper. And that, that's, the park, that's the whole park thing. So we have PDF. We have <coughs> the web, which is now bed sheets of white space and faint sans serif type that I can't read. <coughs> <coughs> and, and, and all this, this, this appearance uh, and all this font crap masquerades for the, 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 the connections that we need, to, we need to keep track of. OK. Many people see the web as an idea that was sprung wholesale from the brow of Minerva. Actually, I see it as the result of a number of mistakes I made in the 1960s and 1970s. <clears throat> in particular, I was talking a great deal about hypertext, and I emphasized the jump link, what other people now call the hyperlink. So the jump link means you're jumping off a diving board into you know what you know not whether. And, uh, and our, our approach has always been different. So here from, from the Project Xanadu webpage, you say, a new kind of writing, parallel pages visibly connected, which I failed to emphasize sufficiently in the 1960s. Uh, OK, so click on this. So the Xanadu Parallel Universe, and here, this is where it started. I published this in 1972, a picture of a, some, a person ostensibly at a, a, a uh, computer screen in an office. Well, there were no computer screens in offices at that time, so this is a mock-up with an IBM Selectric and, and, and plastic. <laughs> but here, here's what she's doing, allegedly. Here we see connections between the contents of one window and another. How can you do that? You can't! Now, Alan Kay tells me that you could do that with the original interface uh, that they had at Xerox Park, but not as it was adapted for the Macintosh and imitated in the PC and imitated on the various Linux things. <clears throat> My slogan is that Steve Jobs truly knew the heart and mind of the user, 
Bill Gates at least knew what a user was, and the Linux people don't have a clue. <coughs> <laughs> so so I, could, I could give you live demos of this if we had more time. Here is, uh, this is from the Xanadu Green server as released in 1999, a, an interface by Kaping Yi, and we see the first draft of the Jack Declaration of the Independence of Independence by Jefferson, and the second draft with the colored lines representing the, the parts that are the same, and the gray areas representing things that were changed. Here, that, uh, we have that live on this machine. <clears throat> Here was Cosmic Book, which uh, essentially draw, drew lines between this window and that window. Ian Heath did this. Um, what he did was he created an overlay for the entire screen on which, the, on which the lines were drawn, because that was the only way to do it in Windows. I don't know if that can be done on the Mac. And here is Xanadu Space, which is our, our crowning demo, and unfortunately got too complicated, and the programmer <coughs> gave up. So over the last five years, two boys in Connecticut have been trying to re reprogram it. It's written in a combination of C++, Python, Zoggle, and ZigZag, which uh, is hard to replicate. And here, uh, this, this same hypertext, which I can show you now, Frodo's giving me time, we, we also put this on uh, in HTML slash JavaScript slash web crap. <coughs> and, uh, and, but let me show you now the, uh, the demo live. So here we have a hypertext in visible in 3D. So this is Xanadu style hypertext with 11 pages connected. So the connections are of, several, of two types, links and transclusion. So a link is, <coughs> A link is, a con is an explicit connection and a transclusion. Oops. A transclusion is hello. <whistles> Back you go. In into your cells. All right. Well, never mind. <coughs> All right. Let's try again. There we are. So the point is that you can fly around and see as, the, as, you, as you step among Successive connections, you can see one page after another swarfing up. That's a combination of swoop and morph, swarfing up to uh, to meet its, com its, its, its companion. So. Right. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and that is from. Sorry, I stepped out of view here. A virtual, this is a virtual Windows machine running on a Mac. Don't you love it? <laughs> okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth on the left, and that is from the King James Bible. Now, of course, you see every, connect, every quotation should be connected to its original source. Nobody else seems to care about that. Adam and Lilith immediately began to fight, and that is from the alphabet of Ben Sira. And uh, so on for the, for the various connections. And the nice thing about this particular visualization is that you can see the successive pages jump around to match what they're doing. Now, just a few things, on, a few issues on how this is done, okay? <coughs> to do this with your conventional data structure does not work. So the, 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 Xanadu data structure, the Xanadu data structure uses an opposite, opposite method. You have two things, the, the freestanding Xanalink, which is an independent file, and the original, the source content, which is kept clean and unchanging. This is not a this is not a technical issue, it's a political issue. So <clears throat> the clean, unchanging text is downloaded by the client and then overlaid with the Xanadu links, which can be reused in other documents since they are freestanding objects. <clears throat> so, the, so that the, uh, the, 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 the sequence is quite simple. The client downloads clean text or clean content of any kind, uh, and, the, uh, and then the connections are shown. So the, con the, the, the classic classic Xanalink, there is my high-tech high uh, uh, illustration, uh, PowerPoint. Um, canonical Xanalink shows a bridge or, or a beam between two documents, and it's represented by a table. But this gets much more complicated because you see you can have trouser links, links that go amongst many parts. Here is a, here is a comment by this, here is a comment by this author commenting simultaneously on these three pages, and that is what represented by one Xanalink, which is a table, as, as, as I've said. So the, and then the other part is the, the Xanadoc file, which is a list of contents. It's essentially a Hollywood EDL, or edit decision list, which is a list of parts to assemble into a, into a structure. And so the Xanadu um, 
Xanadoc file <coughs> is a list of contents and a list of links uh, to apply to them. So that's essentially how it all works, completely independent of any other stuff that's going on today. Uh, my job is not to watch what other people are doing, but to do it right. <coughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Ted. If we were going to do something properly, um, one of the things I've been struck by is um, one of the uses of, of hypertext or Xanadu, as you initially foresaw it, is if you wanted to represent um, multiple versions of a disaster that had happened, where we're not exactly sure where, where causal links are, where associations are. Um, one of the problems with links right now is they don't have conditions attached to them. Like you could use Boolean strings to attach conditions because sometimes you're not ready to see an event as having happened or you don't care about what causation is yet. One of the things that I've never, we, one of the systems in the early 80s maybe started to try and do this and it was never widely used. Do you think that there's any kind of future for that kind of subtlety of linking? Not just creating a physical link, but creating a link that the writer, the reader is ready to see for reasons of, that go with what, what he or she has already read or what he or she is already interested in is ready to, to, ready to read. Okay, there's a lot to unpack in what you said. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> this, is, this was initially designed as a, as a reading and writing system and not for uh, search along many things. So, so searching for conditional links in the world is a, is a different problem, but uh, obviously very important and strongly related. Uh, <clears throat> I, I can't speak to that. I'm only concentrating on the on what is necessary for the media that I've been trying to get working for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff. Um, is it? Do you have a name for that two-window synchronized swimming kind of thing? Swimming? <laughs> you know, uh, browsing, uh, reading, authoring, where. You're constructing links between the two. The thing you had in plastic in the original picture. But simply visibly connected documents. Visibly connected pages. So you have a branding problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I think. Well, that's, they, they co opted all my words, you know. So I keep, I keep, uh, it's, it's hard to decide. So, so I'm, I'm also in a, 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 a quandary of which of many clever slogans to, to, to roll out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, do you know of anything else that has tried to do that kind of no. uh, dual view? No, I, I, think, I think my doing it is a curse. It just keep, kept every, people away much more. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, that's I, good I, By the way, my colleague Roger Gregory is still with me on this after all these years. Great. <laughs> I have a question for you, Doug. You're obviously famous for your fire. Can you give me 20, 30 seconds of why you have a fire, what you're burning for? You have such a beautiful vision you show us of the future, but can you elaborate what it means to us as humanity? No. Uh, no, I designed for myself. <laughs> I, I, want I designed for myself. I want something, I do it. I found and, every time. And, uh, and I work found that every time I've got something working, other rather people than liked it. Well, so rather than, than designing uh, for hypothetical so hard to understand, uh, and, and, and so hard to understand, for example, I taught a course Stone recently, and, and I was astounded that the students knew nothing about computers and had to start over my so, entire so syllabus. After designing my my so, uh, so designing for hypothetical, hypothetical audience is impossible. Audience and so very well for me. an audience I know very well is me, and, uh, and uh, on the assumption that other people will like it if and when we get another book. Thank you very much.